John chapter 3, verses 16 to 24. God loves the world. And the number that we will be featuring of the Greek word is number 4100, believing. And the highlighted words are prepositions. I took a little hiatus for, I think, a month, and I was working on the fourth edition of the Apostolic Bible, Polyglot New Testament. I just finished it today, and we'll have it up a little bit, and it's going to be uh, on downloads that are free. Then it's going to be in our bookstore with a table of contents and hyperlinks to the different sections. They'll have a charge for that, but then uh, we're going to offer it in a, a th- later in a three-ring binder. So with that, um, we'll start now in this video. Nice to be back. Miss uh, doing these videos, and I hope nobody was out there worrying about if i still around and going to continue it or not. I apologize. I probably should have mentioned a little bit more that what I was doing. Chapter 3, verse 16. Uto gar egapi son o theos ton kosmon. For thus God loved the world. The kosmon. Now, the world, the globe that we are on, earth, which we, we, which we are on, is we're on earth. The cosmos includes more of the sun, moon, and stars, and this globe that we are on is called the earth. So God loved the world, the cosmos, everything that he designed and built and put us on it. You designed you, and he put you into being, designed me. And it says God loved it. Now. The things that man does and sin, God does not love. But basically, the love of God is an attribute that most of us have a hard time with. Have a lot of times we don't love, and we're angry. And then suppose God is also sort of the same way. We're made in the image of God, and maybe that's part of that image. But God loved the world. It says in Genesis two one. And the heaven and the earth were completed in all the cosmos of them. So you can see the heaven and the earth are separated. And then it mentions the word the cosmos. Uh, It's it's different. It's the totality of everything. In Isaiah 3, 19, it says, And the necklace and the ornament of their face, the women that they had, uh, the cosmos or the stars and ornaments, Little round baubles uh, are part, we're, we're called cosmos, and we have the word cosmetic. It comes from that. Then in Isaiah thirteen ten, it says, "For the stars of the heaven and Orion, and all the cosmos of heaven shall not give their light." So the idea of the cosmos of the heaven, totality of all this. Creation. Romans 1.10 says, For his unseen attributes from the creation of the world. Now, the world uh, is the cosmos, basically, is the Greek word. And it continues and it says, Oste ton ion of tu ton monogony edokan, uh, so that he gave his only born. Uh, son. So God loved the world. He saw the troubles that we were in with sin, but he sent his world because he loves us. And if you have a son that you really love and you're dear, uh, to go send him out in the battle against evil people is something you may not want to do. But you still, you love him even though He's going out and going to suffer uh, by going to war. The only born, 
of the monogony. Uh, God's only born is Jesus. Uh, the firstborn is another word. Mary had the firstborn was Jesus, and that means there were other children that were born to her and followed. Born people in the Bible that it mentions was one Jephthah's daughter, and Jephthah was a judge who made a bad decision of having a vow that if he defeated his enemies when he got back, the first person that comes out would be dedicated to God, and his daughter did, and so she was never married, and that's in Judges 11.34. Then Isaac uh, mentions in Hebrews 11.17 11, that he was an only born, and then so that all believing, pistevon, there is a participle, uh, one believing. Most of the participles have an ing called a garand, and sometimes an ed if it's a perfect participle. But believing, this word 4100, pistevo, is also to trust. Now, the King James uses the word faith, which I don't use in the King James because of this wording here. It's a verb, pistevo, to believe or to trust. You can't to faith. You have to add other words. It's a terrible uh, word as far as translating and using it in a translation because it just isn't adequate, like believe or trust, which are uh, action verbs. It appears over 300 places in the apostolic. Bible. We're told in Genesis 15, 6, that Abraham trusted in God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, you could say he believed in God. That would be correct. So which one do you use? Well, the translator can use, in, in, into English, can use whatever he would like. He has a choice to use trust or belief. He trusted in God and did what he said. Believing, the devil, it says believed, but believing in itself isn't as strong, I believe, <laughs> as trusting. Genesis 45, 26, it says, And Jacob receded in his thought, for he trusted them not. His eleven sons, after they sold Joseph into Egypt, they came back. The father didn't trust them. Now, believing there, wouldn't he didn't believe them? Well, maybe you could use that word and say that, well, he didn't believe what they said. So you have a choice if you're translating it. In Exodus 4.9, it says, And it will be if they do not believe you in these two signs. Believing of the people. Now, trusting it here, it's not necessarily they're trusting it. Moses or believing in the power of that he has. So another usage of the word pistevo. It continues then uh, that all believing asopton me apolite will not perish if you believe in the Son, trust in him. Uh, Eki zoin aeonion, but should have life eternal. Uh, eternal aeonion. Some people have a hard time with that, especially if you're sinning and you think you're going to go to hell, you don't want hell to be eternal. You want it to be some time shorter, and you're going to get out. But that's not the way it goes in the Word of God. It says in Genesis 9, 16, about the rainbow in heaven being for eternal generations. Genesis 17, 7, the eternal covenant that God made, an eternal covenant. The eternal possession, which is Israel in Genesis 17, 8. An eternal God in Genesis 21, 33. And the everlasting hills in Genesis 29, 46. Ionia, 166. Interesting word to study. Verse 17, it continues. Ugar, a pestilent o Theos ton ion of tu is ton cosmon ina crini ton cosmon. Uh, for God did not send his son into the cosmo that he should judge the world. Now, is not 
that's his purpose. Jesus' purpose was to deliver the world. We'll see that here. But he will, in the future, judge the earth. And it continues, Al Ina, so thee, O cosmos, thee, of two. Uh, but that uh, the world, cosmos, should be delivered by him. He's the deliverer, the savior in the King James. Verse 18, O pistevon isavton u krinate, and there is another participle, believing. The one believing, again, in him is not judged or condemned, basically. It can go either way. O they me pistevon idi kekrite, for, but the one not believing already has been judged. Uh, if you don't believe in Christ, then you're basically under a lifetime being in Hades uh, as the consequences of the unbelief. Why? It says, Oti mi pepistavken is to onoma to monogonus eu to theu. Before he believes not in the name of the only born Son of God. And that is, of course, Jesus. Uh, Philippians 2.10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend heavenly and earthly and underground. Uh, Jesus calls himself, though, in Matthew, almost all the places, the Son of Man. Not until John, we see that he's called the Son of God. Interesting. In verse 19, Ke avti ve estin e crisis. And this is the judgment. Oti tophos elilithen is ton cosmon. That the light has become into the world. Uh, that's the judgment because now we have God coming to deliver a person, and if he doesn't want to be delivered, then the judgment of condemnation. Uh, the light has come into the world. Number 54, 57. Uh, phos, phosphorus is a derivative from that. Ph- photic. In Matthew four sixteen, it says, The people sitting in darkness beheld a great light, and to the one sitting in a place at a shadow of death, light arose to them. He arose, the light arose to me. I was in darkness for 13 years. I walked away from the Lord. Maybe you have same experience. But then the light of Christ enlightened us and enlightened you with his word and so forth. And the darkness, it says, uh, K. Igapison e anthropi malon to scotos e to fos. And men love the darkness more than the light. In John 1 5, we see that it says, And the light appears in the darkness, and the darkness overtook it not. Now, people live in darkness, sin, doing things at nighttime bad. And that's a, a sort of a physical darkness, but there's a spiritual darkness of doing things you don't want other people to know what you're doing. I have had spiritual darkness in my life. And yet, Jesus, the darkness can't overcome the light. We, all, we can put the light out and then walk in darkness, I believe, but not me. I don't want to do that, neither do you, I'm sure. And then it says, Ingar ponyara avton ta'erga, for their works were evil. So they're doing evil works, you're doing evil works, you want to be in the darkness. You see people doing all sorts of um, rioting, and they're always wearing a mask, covering their face, so nobody would know who they were. In verse 20, Pascar o favla prason, me see to fos, for every one acting heedlessly detests the light. Yeah, in 
if you were somebody's doing something going to rob you or do something, well, you could have a gun and try to protect yourself, but all you would have to really do is, if they're there, is to shine a bright light on them, and they would run away because they don't want people to see what they're doing or who they are. So uh, they're at, once they're at, they detest the light, anybody showing shining the light. Uh, I have a house behind me. It's a, a rental for a nightly rental. People sometimes stay up late, and they go out and they get into the hot tub, talk loud, make noise. And I'm thinking, well, you know, probably the best thing I could put it there would be a floodlight. Whenever I hear it to flip the floodlight on, I bet they'd freak out. But I haven't done that because it doesn't happen that often. So the ones acting heedlessly detest the light, ke uk erkete pros tofos, and they do not come to the light. They don't come to Jesus. So this is light here is spiritual, light of talking about Jesus, ina me. Alakthi ta erga of too that his works should be reproved. So you don't want somebody shining the light and seeing what you're doing is basically the whole thing of verse twenty. Interesting verse. Twenty one, though it continues, O they pion tin alithion, urkate pros tofos, but the ones observing the truth. Come to the light, and that would be us. Uh, in Malachi two six, it says, "A portent of Jesus, the law of truth was in his mouth, and injustice was not found in his lips." Uh, the truth, Jesus was the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. The one observing the truth comes to the light, that his work should be manifested. In a fanarothi of tu taarga. Oti en theo esten ergasmena, that by God they are working, the works of God in our life. Verse 22 Meta tavta ilthen o Isus ke imathite avtu is tin eorthian gin. And after these things, Jesus came and his disciples into the Judean land. So they're Someplace in Judea, which is below Galilee, a little below the Sea of Galilee. And it says, Ke aki the atrive met av ton ke evaptizan. And there he spent time with them and was immersing. The first person to be immersed in the Bible was back in 2 Kings 5.14. That would be Naaman the Syrian who came down, he had leprosy, uh, a Jewish slave told him that there was a man that could heal him in Jude, down in uh, Israel. He goes down to the prophet, the prophet tells him to go dip, immerse seven times in the Jordan, I think it was the Jordan, and he complains and says, well, I could have go, done that in a river in Syria, which is bigger than that little stream, and so he was leaving, and his right-hand man told him, he said, well, if the prophet told you to go do something very difficult, you would have done it. So in, the Syrian general took that in and so went down to the uh, water and immersed himself seven times, and he was healed of his leprosy. And then the next immersion is, talks about is the immersion of John. And that's in uh, one place, Acts 19.3, that it's talking about the immersion of John even later after John was gone. And he immersed where there's much water, as we see here a little bit, uh, the Jordan, a river. So you could put somebody under. It's not sprinkle or pour, as I've mentioned so many places. If it was sprinkle, rantizo, pour, reo, but it's not. Baptizo, it means to immerse. There's the immersion of the death of Jesus. We see that in John 1038, where the sons of Zebedee want to sit at the right hand of Jesus, and Jesus asked if they can be immersed, and what he has to be immersed. And they said, yes, they can. And that was his death, and we see that a little bit more expounded on by Paul in Romans 6, 3, where he says, 
Or do you not know that as many as we were immersed unto Christ, unto his death we were immersed? You go under, and if you didn't come back up, you would be dead. The next immersion was the Ethiopian eunuch, Acts 8.38, where he saw there was enough water there for him to go down and be baptized, baptized, immersed. And then in Mark 1.8, John says, I indeed immerse you in water, but he shall immerse you in Holy Spirit. Now, do you want to be just sprinkled with the Holy Spirit or have a little poured on you or be completely immersed in the Holy Spirit? I want to be completely immersed in the Holy Spirit. Now, the immersion of the water, Jesus, it says he didn't do it actually himself. He didn't uh, immerse in water. And later, Paul co- mentions about how he didn't want to immerse of people, but yet he did a few people, and he mentioned, gives their names. So he spent his time there immersing. In verse 23, in the ke Ioannis baptizon in Ainon Agis to Salim. And John was also immersing in Anon near Salim. That probably was a little bit further north, people believe. Not for sure where that is. Then it continues and says, Oti ida tapola in a key, for there was much water there. So the immersion, you have to go under. And it says it right here, there's much water. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the immersion, a uh, true immersion. It would be a sprinkling or a pouring or something like that. Now, I suppose there's going to be times when you can't immerse somebody. If they are um, wanted to be baptized and they're in a hospital and dying, you, you could, I guess, take them to a tub and put them under. But then, I, you know, putting water on them there, I think, is valid. I'm not uh, the judge. I don't, I don't think there would be a problem with that. It's like a anointing in oil, sort of. So that's where John was. And it says, Ke paraginon to, ke evaptizon to, and they were arriving and immersing. People were coming to both of the immersions of Jesus and John. And it says in verse 24, Upogar in vevlimenos is tin filakin, O Ioannis, for not yet was John thrown in to prison. Next video seminar, the disciples of John question Jesus.